Thank you so much for showing up for new binary search tutorial video. I am so proud of you for showing up today. Actually, consistency is very hard for me also, but it is you who is motivating me. So don't just motivate me, but also your friends. Share the video, share the series with everyone, motivate everyone to do more and more. Share on LinkedIn, Insta, everywhere. Tag me, I will share it, I promise. In our last video, we used estate functions and we were able to do binary search so easily. It was so easy. But today, again, I am showing you an example where you can't use it and you will need to write the binary search code. I know you're going to go like it. You told me you're supposed to write this. But I also told you that your basics should be clear because for questions like this, you will be required to implement binary search. So let's look at one such question. It's a medium level question. It can be asked. And this is sort of tricky. See, as you do more and more number of questions, you will realize why you need to use binary search over here and that is why you need to practice more and more. So the question is that an integer x is given to you and you have to find the square root of x. Now it seems like such an easy example, right? Just use the library function square root itself. But did you know that actually if you compare the graphs of square root and log in, log in is more efficient for big numbers and that is what your interviewer might expect you to do to come up with a better solution than coming up with just a square root. And as you can see here, actually it is mentioned that expected time complexity is order of log n and you cannot use any extra space also. So pause for one minute and think if you, if I was not teaching you, if you were not here part of binary search series, how you would have thought that, okay, this problem is based on binary search. Let's look at what all we can understand from, you know, normal things that we know. So we know that square root of two is four, three is nine, like this. We know the square roots, right? So we know as the number increases, its square root is also going to be more. So if we have numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the square roots are also going to be increasing only. If we have numbers in increasing order, the square roots will also be increasing order only. So this is one point that we know that as numbers increase or decrease, their square roots or their squares also increase or decrease correspondingly, right? So this is one point that we know. Second point that we know is that the square root of any number x will lie between 1 and x by 2, right? Is it right or wrong? Think of any number. Think of say 9. Square root of 9 is what? 3, which is less than x by 2, which is 9 by 2. Think of any number, 16. 16 the square root is what? 4. 16 by 2 is what? 8. The maximum till where your square root value can go is x by 2. That is what we are going to use in binary search. Now let me show you in diagram also to understand how binary search can be used. To understand, let's take a few numbers, suppose 1, 3, 5, uh, 10, 20, suppose. Now their squares are going to be what? 1, 9, 25, 100, 400, right? Now suppose you have to find square root of number 16, okay? So you know that, okay, 16 is between basically these two. So you will know that the square root is also actually going to be between these two, right? So you can actually find from this 16 that, okay, where your square root is going to be. And the question says that if x is not a perfect square, then you have to return the floor of root x. So suppose say you were finding a root of 20. Now 20 is not a perfect square. So you're going to return the floor of root x. So basically in that case, you will have to return 4 itself. So based on whatever we know, let's try implementing binary search. So what is going to be our low and high value over here? So our low value is going to be 1 and our high value is going to be x by 2, right? Because that is the maximum value that is possible of our answer. And here another thing to keep in mind, we are returning long long, we are also passing long long. So x can be really big, so x by 2 might be really big. So I am taking the value as long long itself to make sure that okay, I don't overflow from integer. Now I am going to take an answer and I am going to store it over here. And now let's write our while loop. So what is our while loop? While L is less than or equal to H. I hope these basics are clear now. We don't have to worry about these. And we will be returning answer. Okay. So basically while loop means that we are going to go until we look at like one element. So L cannot be greater than H, right? Because that won't make any sense. Otherwise, we are going to get stuck in a forever loop. Now that we are inside the while loop, let's calculate the middle value. And how do we calculate the middle value? Again, back to the basics, it's going to be L plus H minus L by 2. So you're already clear with so many basics, you're doing great. Now that we have the mid value, let's also calculate the square of this mid value. Okay, so let's call it say 
square itself and we are going to calculate it by mid into mid. Now what we have to do is we have to see whether this square is equal to x or not. What is the relation between them? So we, we are basically checking can mid be the answer of uh, square root of x? Can it be the answer or not? So that is why we have to compare square and x, right? Now back to basics, when we compare square and x, what can be the three conditions possible? One can be when square is greater than x. Another one will be when square is less than x. And third will be when both are equal. Now when both are equal, that means the mid curve square is actually equal to x itself. So that means we have found the exact answer, right? So we can return the mid value from here itself. See, mid into mid is equal to square, where here, if we are in this condition, that means square is equal to x. So we have found our answer, so we can return it over here as well. Otherwise, if our square value is actually more, that means we need to reduce our square value. That means we need to reduce our h value to mid minus 1. So here we are going to reduce to mid minus 1. Now, here comes the tricky part. When square is less than x, see, here the thing is, it is a possibility that we never find a perfect square. If not a perfect square, we have to return the floor. So it is a possibility that this square is actually the answer itself. But we can't be sure whether it is the answer or not. We have to wait till the while loop is ended or till we find the exact perfect square. So here what we are going to do is we are going to store the value in the answer. So basically we are storing the mid value in the answer because what we are going to do is after this we are going to start searching the right side. See this is what we do in binary search right. We either go towards left side or we go towards right side. Now since we are going towards right side we will never come back to this middle element right. And now this can be a possible answer that is why I am storing it. Maybe the x that we have doesn't have a perfect square and this mid itself is the floor of the root x and that is why we store it. Now that we have written the code before compiling and running it, let's think of all the edge cases. What are the edge cases that you can think of? See here we are taking our while loop from 1 to x by 2. So what are the edge cases that you can think of? See here the constraints are given as 1 to 10 power 7 x value. Suppose it was from 0, then we would have to handle the case of 0 also. If x would have been 0, then root of 0 is what? We will have to handle the case, right? We have to either return 0 or minus 1. That depends if it's an invalid input, do we have to handle such cases or not. Right now, our constraint says that it can start from 1. Say our x value is 1, what happens then? See, our h value will actually become 1 by 2, which will become 0. So our h value will actually become 0 and l value will be 1. And so our answer would not be there. And that is why, oh, I have written long log equal to answer. I hope all of you notice this. Otherwise, uh, let me know in the comments whether you notice this or not, okay? And so if x is equal to 1, we need to handle this edge case, then we return 1 itself. I hope we have handled all the edge cases. Can you think of any other edge case? Let's compile and run and see whether we have missed anything. Now let's submit it. Works. So this is it for today's video. I hope you are enjoying the video series. Also, if you want me to cover any specific question, let me know in the comments. I will definitely cover it. And let's stay consistent. Let's show up tomorrow also. Okay, for that, hit the bell icon and the subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Thank you so much for all your love and support. It means a lot to me. Thank you.